the COVID pandemic, there's lots of uncertainties about how long it will last and what the lasting impact will be. Um, but in the, sh in the short term, we've seen it really accelerate interest in pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. Um, and it's also, though clarified, although public transit ridership has fallen, you know, for obvious reasons, a lot of cities have realized that they need to think about transit as a critical infrastructure and that it gets key health workers and people who need dialysis to where they where they need to get to. And so uh, clearly that it, it will have to see where all the all the modes and how what mobility looks like um, after uh, the pandemic eases and there's a return to life as, as normal. But I think it certainly has shifted perceptions about uh, the role of transit and its value um, even beyond um, the kind of number of riders in any given day, and that, that it's really an asset um, that a city uh, needs. And and then on the on the bike sharing, and even just the broader reuse of public space, um, taking advantage of streets as venues for dining and other activities because it's safer than indoor spaces. I think uh, both those trends have pre-existed. Um, you know the the pandemic, but it's maybe opening the eyes of a lot of cities of the value of rethinking how they're using their, their street space. And so within the module, we'll find opportunities to incorporate maybe a little bit about COVID. We have a whole topic called Rethinking Streets, where we'll discuss the National Association of um, City Transportation Officials has promoted creative rethinking of urban streets. Instead of just providing arterials for private vehicles, can we create plazas? Can you create dedicated lanes for transit and cycling? And they've actually realized that some of those designs can be more efficient from a transportation point of view of moving people um, than a conventional street, which is giving lots of space to single occupancy vehicles. So we'll touch on some of those design ideas, which the current pandemic has really um, been helping to promote and have an opportunity to reflect on, you know, what, what the cities of the future might look like. When the cities are, are uh, making transportation investments, even making public policy, um, they um, want to consider the, the long term. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, infrastructure is going to last quite a while. And so um, in urban planning, traditionally, this long range planning, um, one approach has been to think about forecasting what the future will be like and then prepare for that prediction, basically. Another approach has been to kind of envision what you want the future to be like. Um, but really, I think both of those have a big weakness. Um, and the weakness is that cities globally are facing increasing uncertainties. And the pandemic is, is you know, a key example front and center, um, but also the advent of something like Uber, um, where these mobility companies can come to your city and start operating and you know, create uh, a new service, but also maybe create unexpected impacts in terms of more traffic and taking ridership away from transit, et cetera. So a, a methodology that we'll talk about in the module that's been created to plan in this climate of uncertainty is known as scenario planning. And at the heart of it is about thinking about what external uncertainties could affect your city. And if it's focused on mobility, it might be specific to the mobility system. Um, and then uh, develop several alternative scenarios so it can be used, you know, either to kind of clarify what your goals are or to prepare for uh, things like climate uncertainty or technological uncertainty. Um, and so it, clearly it's a very rich methodology and in the module we'll look at some specific examples of different cities creating transportation scenarios, um, creating scenarios to look at AV technology and what investments they should make. Um, and hopefully the students will gain an appreciation of, of the power and um, relevance of this method um, uh, in addressing, you know, you know the long-term uncertainty that, that decision makers have to face. Mm -hmm.